Let's now talk a little bit about outsourcing and globalization. Many, many companies outsource for a variety of reasons. It's cheaper, or they can have a shop that's running at night while, while this side of the world is sleeping, that side of the world is busy working. Um, or uh, maybe they just want to have local presence, or uh, maybe they just want to um, be able to not worry about a whole section of IT service and uh, let somebody else handle it. Maybe the call center is outsourced, the help desk is outsourced, disaster recovery is outsourced, um, certain consulting is outsourced, or well, we get consultants. So let's talk about different kinds of outsourcing um, resource practices. With insourced, that of course means that we're getting people from our own organization and we're, we're picking different people, possibly from different departments or our own department, to work on a project. Outsourced, of course, means that we are having some other organization, third party, do stuff for us. We could have a combination of both. It could be on-site or off-site, and off-site doesn't necessarily mean in a whole other country, but it's not at our headquarters. It could be at another location. But then, of course, we can also have offshore, which is, generally means a whole other country, which has a whole other set of regulations and culture and language and time zones and, and things like that. And when we're involving all of these, then we have this concept of globalization. Now, for strategy for outsourcing, it's very common to outsource help desk or application development or disaster recovery. Uh, it's also very common to outsource um, some of your highly skilled uh, tasks. It's common to outsource training. Uh, so these are only just some things. Um, if you need uh, really uh, highly skilled people to design or develop something, you could outsource that. So these are different possible areas in which we'll outsource, and we need a strategy for dealing with the outsourcing. And if we're going to have a global strategy, then we're taking advantage of offshore and off-site resources and outsourcing. But of course, management's got to pay close attention because you've got to, I mean, they're outside of your control, especially if they're in another country. So you've got to make sure that they're doing what you need them to do and um, not getting you into any kind of trouble and um, not costing you unnecessarily. So the big question then is, if we're going to outsource, do we get a return on investment, ROI? And there's a little formula here which you do not need to memorize, but you can see return on investment, we take the revenue that we take in minus the expenses, we divide it by the uh, investment, and that whole thing multiplied by 100 tells us our return on investment. If we're going to be contracting folks, contractual agreements have to include the ability to review and audit. And I'll tell you, a good contractor uh, that is going to do stuff for you, uh, they'll be, they should be willing to show you at least the relevant parts of their own security policy so that you know there are no gaps. Maybe you've got all your security covered, but maybe they're really lax and you're depending on them for certain core functions. So they should be willing to show you their security policy and their disaster recovery plan and business continuity plan as well. So you need to be able to review and audit the um, contractual agreements. You need to be able to have a certain expectation of quality of service and continuity of service, and you want to see the controls and the procedures that they have in place. Here's an example of a service level agreement in SLA. So we can see that we have parties to an agreement. We expect certain performance levels. Certain services are being provided. Here are the penalties in case you don't. Like, here's this thing. Each downtime violation will result in a 5% reduction fee for the month. Here's disaster responsibilities. And so we expect to have all of this stuff built into the SLA. Along with that, you're probably going to have them sign an NDA as well, a non-disclosure agreement, where basically we're entrusting them with um, sensitive information or confidential information or corporate confidential information. So we want them to sign an NDA where they won't reveal this stuff. So we want to see the NDA and make sure people have signed it. And um, the NDA can be to one party, to their employees, mutually restrictive between both of us, just specific people on the job, whatever. But it is a legal contract outlining what we're sharing, um, how we restrict access, 
uh, to the third parties and the confidential relationship to protect our information assets. Like I've been at sites where we signed an NDA and they still didn't trust us. So um, the, the, we did get issued laptops, but the laptops were locked down in a way that there was no way to take information off of them. And there was no way to email it out. And there was no way to, to plug in any kind of removable media at all. And they had lots of tight controls over information leakage outside of their own organization. And the badges that the contractors wore had um, distinguishing features on them, so everyone knew at a glance that we were not an internal part of the organization. We were a contractor. So contract management practices, agreements got to be clear. There's got to be clauses to guard against potential losses and, and situations. Um, there's got to be procedures for protecting the organization. There's got to be non-disclosure. There's got to be, it's got to be um, understandable reporting. We expect uh, the format and the procedure for reporting to be uh, understandable. We expect a, concept, a comprehensive access control policy. We expect formal change management to be in place. So if you're going to change anything at all, we expect a formal um, method to be in place where it's approved. You don't just ad hoc go changing or adding anything. And if there's going to be any third party outsourcing, if they're going to outsource, we need to address all of that as well. So now, how do we audit and report on third parties? We have to worry about that as well, make sure that that is built in. So when you are looking at IT contracting strategies and policies, Make sure, of course, that management supports the development of these service contracts. And prior to the agreement, you got to look at all the contracts, make sure that they're appropriate, and that they cover all the terms you need. You may need to look at their documented procedures, uh, whoever your outsourcer is. Make sure that uh, they have um, uh, some sort of quality assurance program. And um, make sure that their quality assurance program actually produces results. And you'll need to regularly review the contracts, the SLAs, and the NDAs.